Hey guys, Gospel Guitars here, and today we're going to start a series on my Mesa Dual Rectifier Tremolo Verb. One of the nicest amps that has ever been turned out by Mesa, in my opinion. It's the only one I've owned, but it's not the only one I've played on, and it's very nice. There will be sound demos. I'm going to go over all the controls, although I'll do that quickly for the front. This is basic stuff here. I'll flip it around and go over the back, and you'll know all the options you have to do by the end of this video. Stay tuned. Okay, we're going to start on the left side. Typical power switch, standby switch, your power lamp. Now you have a tremolo system here and it is channel assignable. So the top switch is your orange channel on and off switch and the red channel has its own on and off switch and you can set the speed and depth of the tremolo system. Moving over now. Moving over to the... Take a look at the loop master switch, or uh, control, the loop master active here. Um, this functions differently. We'll get into this, how this functions later but it has to do with being a master control over your channel masters when the effects loop is active. You've got next your indicators here for when your channel is on for orange, your effects loop is turned on or channel red. Next in line we have our master volume control for the red channel. On top we have the master for the orange channel. Each channel has its own dedicated reverb, presence, bass, bass would be over here, the mids, trebles, and your gains. And last but not least, we have our different types of uh, tonal setups. So the orange channel we have a clean setting and you can flip it down for a vintage high gain setting and then on the red channel we have a blues setting and a modern high gain setting then we have an input for your foot switch and the input for the guitar and I think right now would be a good time to mention that there are some differences even though it looks like all the controls are the same the amp is not wired the same on each channel say for example on the orange channel with the presence control uh, it affects more of the treble control as you use this in line with the treble control together to find how much of the high end you want and how much bite you want it to have on the red channel, the presence control affects more of your high mids than the treble. So you can get that really thick mid biting, cutting tone that you want for a lot of the heavy metal stuff. And it sounds really good. And these can interact with each other depending on how you're setting a couple switches on the back that lets you actually clone your orange channel to your red channel or your red channel to your orange channel or you can keep them both as distinctly different channels. It's got a couple of neat tricks like that. I'll go into that more when we flip it around to the back. But I thought I'd mention this at this point since we're looking at the EQ controls and it looks like they all do the same thing, but they don't. Okay, got this thing turned around. And as you can see, there are a couple extra tubes in here over what you see in most tube amps. You probably can tell these are the four power tubes. There are also five preamp tubes behind those. And these are the rectifier tubes. And we'll get into the rectifier setup in a minute. Lots of options on the back. We'll start on the left again and work our way across. Okay, starting here on the uh, left side, we've got our channel select switch. If you're using a foot switch, you want this in the orange position. Down here, we have the cloning feature. So in the middle, both channels are separate. 
the EQing and everything is different in the orange channel than the red channel. <clears throat> the distortion overdrives and the uh, tonal values are different in the normal position. If you favor the red or the orange, you can flip this switch to put orange to the modern channel or you can put red to the vintage channel. So basically you're duplicating the orange channel or you're duplicating the red channel. Because I might want the clean channel of the orange, but I might want the vintage distortion from the orange as well. Well, there's only one orange, right? So if I duplicate it to the red over here, then I can use the vintage distortion on that red channel. It's pretty cool, and I believe uh, Mesa invented it um, back in 1996, I guess. Um, that's when this amp was manufactured. Next in line, we have our inputs for the external puts, or, uh, switches. We've got our loop control, reverb, tremolo, and channel controls. So just plug in your pedals there to control that. I have two double switching Mesa pe pedals for this amp that I use. Sliding on over. We have our choice of speaker cabinets. We got one 16 ohm out, we got two 8 ohm out, we got two 4 ohm out. Uh, don't think I'm gonna do a whole video right now, lesson on why and how you use the ohm ratings, but I will tell you that do not think because there's two 8 ohm outs that you can hook up two 8 ohm cabs that way. Um, your cabs are usually like a full stack is going to be two 8 ohm 412 cabs, but they're going to be a 4 ohm setup. So you don't want to run one cab here and one cab here because then you're going to run this at a different rating. So there's whole lessons out there on YouTube. It's kind of hard to keep it straight in my head, so if I just messed that up, forgive me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you really want to know what you're doing when you're hooking up your speakers, but you've got lots of options here to do that, and that's pretty nice. Next, we have a slave output. So um, you can use this for different things. I use it as a send record. Uh, but you can send this, and it's got a level control right here. You can send this to another MESA head um, and slave it to this head for uh, the power amps, I guess. Or you can just run the slave out um, to a power amp and another, like 212 or whatever you have. So you can come up with different uses for that. Um, next over, we have the loop select. So we have external foot switch over here on the right. Then we have red auto, orange auto on the bottom. We have loop on for orange and red. And then we have bypass the loop. So there's different ways that you can run your effects loop um, on this amplifier. You can just set it up for either or, or both on this amp. So that's kind of nice. Next over, we have our send and mix level for our effects loop. So we have a control here for your send level, which you want to set it to where you're not making your effects box take too hot of a signal. You want to set this up according to your needs for your pedal board. Or if you're running this into a rack, you don't want to set it so high that you overload the input on your rack. So you want to keep an eye on your inputs and levels and gain structure. And then the mix level is coming back into the head. Normally you would run it at 100, but you can turn it down to nothing. So why you do that, I don't know, but anyway. So anyway, I run it wide open all the time. I'm just using pedals on the floor but I have had to back this off. It seems like my phaser uh, 90 doesn't like this too hot. Um, so next over, we've got our bias switch. You can run 6L6s or EL34s in this amp without rebiasing. I don't care what anybody tells you, MESAs do not need to be rebiased. So that's your choice. I have 6L6s in mind. I'm also running all MESA tubes. And it's been recently retubed. Even though we had a tube shortage, uh, it was a real pain in the ass to find them all, but I did. Okay, next over 
at the very end we have our ground switch in case you're getting some nasty buzzing on stage you got two options you got an A and a B for your ground switching and then here is where we'll talk a little bit we've got the rectifier tubes but it's also got silicone diode rectifiers in here so the vacuum tubes are really good like if you're playing blues and things like that for that nice spongy tube amp feel that everybody loves the problem is if you start doing like five finger death punch or something it's not tight enough it doesn't respond fast so flip it over to the silicone diodes and you will be kicking butt it also kicks the power output up a bit and so depending on what your mood is um, you can just flip this rectifier back and forth next over is your fuse and then you've got your spongy and bold switch your spongy is just kind of what it says it makes it feel more spongy kind of like the rectifier tube slow things down just a little or you can go to bold with the power and it just goes 100 percent balls to the wall and if you combine bold with silicone diodes you're going to blow some windows out so it's nice and powerful so there's no end of power supply on this amp i like it in spongy and vacuum tubes most of the time um, i don't play out on stage anymore this is <laughs> this is my bedroom amp so anybody tells you, you can't play a mess of 412 in your bedroom yeah i'm about to prove that wrong okay and i don't use attenuators so just just the amp <laughs> that'll come later so anyway that is the back of the amp as we zoom out a little bit there should be a metal bar that goes across the back of this but uh this was purchased used uh, by my woman who loves me very much obviously i found it used i mentioned wow what a great amp and i found it under the christmas tree so much to my surprise i was not expecting her to do that um so that's all of the ins and outs of the head and stay tuned for more videos coming on demos and using each section of the amp to show you all the different options that uh, we have with this such a great great head so stay tuned hit the bell downstairs hit the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching